Hey everybody, I'm here with Joey, my son. Joey, say hi. Hi. And we've, we've got a quarter that came in. We shipped, uh, is it 5.9? Yep. We shipped a 5.9 to a customer back east. Uh, we ship them all over the place. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we've, got a, else. we've got a quarter that's come in. I'm gonna show you the crank. Uh, so this motor's been built before. This is not an original motor and this core has got some issues and uh, we're gonna talk about them. But it's a good learning experience for you guys uh, to understand what you want in your motor and why did this go down because this what this is not an old rebuild uh the guy talked to us about it first thing i want to show you is come here the pistons that came out of this i want you to see all this carbon that is that is blown by the first ring i mean we should have a little bit there but i mean some of these are just a ton of buildup between the first ring and then the second ring it's the same amount of carbon between the combustion chamber and the top ring and the second. So it's almost like, why is that blowing by and we're getting all that blow by to our second ring? I asked the question, anybody else out there should ask it because it's like, mm, that shouldn't have happened. So the first thing we go is like, mm, cylinder wall. What's our cylinder wall uh, finish? This shows me that this is not a builder that's been trained. You never wanna put your C-clips on the three or nine o'clock position. They always should be at six or 12. And there's a reason for that. Now on a diesel, we're not revving this motor to seven grand. We get it, the motor won't go that fast. But it's a good habit because if you have these type of clips on a motor that really revs, they'll actually, the centrifugal force, they can actually collapse and come out. Uh, so, so remember, this type of a, of a uh, C-clip uh, north to south, not east to west. Check a spot that's not on the thrust wall, that's not so glazed, maybe it'll give me a better yeah. reading. We're gonna do a profile check on these cylinder walls at a microscopic level, and we'll talk about what we're looking for here. So we've got our tooling in here, and Joey, we call this a? Profilometer. Profilometer. Oh, that was good. I need primed on that word, don't <laughs> ask me again. Thank you for that. There's a diamond stylus on here, inside there, and it draws across the surface a small little diamond on the end of this pro there's a probe in there and if you go to the back side you'll see that probe right here as it draws across the surface of that cylinder wall it picks up every little imperfection in the peak and valleys and you want peaks and valleys the valleys hold oil and the peaks or plateau you want a flat plateau not a not a peak like that that'll scratch yeah. the ring but a plateau with a valley, and those valleys hold oil. You, you want oil on your cylinder wall for lubrication. So, our, our, I mean, we're low. We're pretty dang smooth. Yeah. We've got decent valleys, but nothing for really the rings to break in on. So these, these valleys here, this is, this is kind of irregular, but the cylinder oil. wall, the, the actual cylinder wall is this here, where this, this blue area is here. This is actually the, the, the surface of the material. Our RA, oh my gosh is only 4.2 that tells us it's, it's too smooth it's too smooth i mean you've got decent our, valleys but in our material ratio here i mean this is terrible we we got just a smooth surface in a valley so now we know why did that top ring have so much carbon and you know blow by go by it too smooth of a surface you'd be absolutely shocked at how many shops do not have this technology to actually look at the surface finish and every ring manufacturer will give you a tolerance of where they want their rings, and I can guarantee you, on a diesel, it ain't it ain't four. Uh, what, what are we looking for? Fifteen to twenty-five or something. I mean, you're never that? really basing it off of the RA. Um, it's usually off of your RK and your RVK and your RPK. You've got no peaks. I mean, th there's nothing for that ring to actually break in on. Now, this is a run motor, but we've done this enough. Even on a run, to mo you know, a motor that's been run and, and, and had poles on it. The surface is not correct. The other thing that we found is we have no uh, crosshatch pattern in this thing. It's actually... It, it's too hard to read because there's not enough crosshatch in there. Yeah, there's not enough crosshatch. But let's, let's take a picture with our microscope here. You want these lines to be at like 45. Okay. And we've got them at 38. You really want a little more like that helps the oil to drain back down to the crankcase. If you've got too steep of an angle, it's going to leave the oil on the wall. Hence why you've got so much oil, oil burn and carbon yep. on those pistons. So all this technology is available. The manufacturers use it, you know, race shops use it. You want your machine shop to use it. And let's look at the, uh, the crankshaft. We got a problem with the crank. 
Somebody has turned it down 20, 20 thou. It's 20, 20. 20, 20, 20 on the mains, 20 on the rods, which means it's, it's been cut 20 thou. So we can put oversized bearings in it. And we're gonna look at the, 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 the picture here of our surface finish on that crank. And this is, yeah, That's this radius. Now see this radius, I want you to pay attention. You see all these bounces here? This wave here, this wave here, this wave here, okay? We're on the edge, if you'll look here, we're looking at the radius of the crank, and this is why I want to give you a microscopic picture of that. The reason I, I want to point that out is, you want your engine builder to tear down your engine. Let, I, I should maybe say that, you know? So many times guys will tear down their engine, and they'll take the parts into me, although I don't do engines like that anymore for, for shops or people. Uh, I don't do individual machine work. I just don't do that anymore. I build full motors because I have found out over the years that I can do all the machine work right and a guy can take that and go build his motor and blow it up and he'll, he'll do a bad review on me because he, he thinks it's my machine work and it wasn't. So I either do the whole thing or I don't do it. But I want to show you this, this, this uh, main bearing. This is a half a shell that came off of one of the mains here. It actually came off this one. But do you see how we have bearing wore out here down to, the, down to the brass and here too? And it's not here in the center. What that's, what's caused that is exactly the way this crank was ground. Maybe we should just wheel this over there real quick. To the crank shop. Let's go to the crank shop. I can finish this lesson. It'll be better. There to try to keep the birds out. Okay, let's, let's talk about the radius, why this is wrong in this crank. Getting back to this bearing, I want to show you here why this is not good. And I see this on a lot of cranks, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why I see this. I see this on a lot of cranks because if you can look here at the grinding wheel, you have to have a radius on a crank. And if you look, you'll see this little bit of radius. Now, the radius on that crank, I'm, I've measured it, it's a 5 32nd radius. How do I know that? because I'm going to take this radius gauge right here and you put it right in there. You see how I got no light? See that? Now, I have a whole packet here of different gauges to, to check that. This is called a radius gauge. So, you know, if you've got a big radius, you can, you can see what I'm talking about. Big industrial crank or a small little gasser, you'd have a smaller little radius, okay? and they're all different sizes. So you'd want to take your radius gauge after you check that on your crank and put it on your wheel, and you can see that I don't have quite the right radius on this, so I'd have to dress this wheel. If you can tell, we're, we're pretty close, but we're not close enough, okay? It, it's not laying flat on both edges. So we'd have a radius dresser. This is why we see this on a, a ton of rebuilds, okay? Because this is what you have to do. If, if you don't have the right radius on your stones, now, now most shops, there's different stones here. And you have different widths of stone because you have different size journals on a crank. But you have to dress your radius. And that's what this will do. We're not going to dress the radius, but we would bring the wheel in here. And then you can, this, this diamond dresser here, you bring it up against the wheel. You want me to do that for you? You getting tired? Yeah. I'm, I'm conditioned, dude. We're running this morning. I'm feeling Did great. You? Good for you. Three miles. Okay, so what we'll do is, is we'll bring this wheel close to it. Of course, the wheel will be spinning. I'm, I'm not going to fire it up. And then we can change that radius. And you can adjust the radius of this. So this diamond will go in and out. This is the stopper for it. That'll set your distance for your diamond and then that's going to give you the scale for your radius. What I'm showing you here is in order to do that, a shop has to stop on a crank and get the correct radius on their stone. Most guys just won't do it. They, they just won't do it. So what happens is now when they grind that crank, the crank is in here. They come in on the wheel. The wheel's this wide. It's not that wide. So in order now to get the full sweep on the crank on this journal, 
they do what they call a sweep. So let's say this is the back side of the crank wheel and it's coming in here and instead of, instead of uh, coming back out and then plunging like this, coming back out and plunging like that to get the radius, they do this. They just take the wheel and move the machine like this, up against that. And what it does is, it pushes the wheel like that. It actually, don't, don't kid yourself, it'll push that wheel and it'll go like that. I'm, I'm exaggerating it. And that's what happens here. So you have taper in your journal. If the taper is like this. It's called what? Bell mouth. Bell mouth taper. That would be a barrel taper. So you have a bell mouth taper, and that's what's causing your bearings. When you see your bearings and you tear them down, granted, the engine started up and it ran. The machine shop collected their money, the builder collected his money, and you don't know that you got a ticking time bomb going on in your motor. You've killed the durability and the longevity of that motor. Guys, these are, these are what you want to look for in teardown. There's so much, there, a teardown and inspection on an engine is rich with information. Thanks.